Hey everyone, we're going to be learning how to measure a pair of jeans on a pattern without making a muslin in the beginning. I am Andrea with Soda Fit and I blog over at sodafit.com. I appreciate you for dropping in. Thank you for joining us in this sew along for fitting a pair of jeans. This is part of the Patreon club that I have and the patrons have seen this before. So if you want to be a patron and get early access to these wonderful videos and sew to fit alongs, which is really called sew to fit along. Uh, today we're going to be going over the pattern itself. So you're going to enjoy some of the talking I give you and the process as far as going through uh, cutting out the pattern and reviewing the different parts of the pattern as you move through. The pattern is a customized pattern based on my measurement and it is one of the patterns from Bootstrap and the uh, designer is Vado Design. That pattern is no longer available but you will be able to find other patterns online or at the store. So we're going to first start with this customized pattern which is a flare leg pattern that I'm going to be showing you how to measure, how to align the grain lines. Uh, after this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make those adjustments. So right now, you can take this video as something to help you move forward in preparing it for making the adjustments even before you make a muslin. If you choose to make a muslin after this point, you can actually do that because of the measurements and the information I tell you in this video. I prefer to make all of the adjustments on a pattern that has been traced and then move forward with making the adjustments when I try out the muslin. You make the choice, that is how you want to do it. And I will also be discussing the fabric consideration that you need to take in mind, whether it's gonna be a stretchy fabric. You've already seen the video I showed you on how to go shopping for fabric and then how to measure your body. I talk about that. There is also another video, you can see that up in the corner here with the i card that leads you to a video on how to literally measure your body and then take those measurements and apply those to the actual pattern so that you can determine how much you need to make the changes and i always write on the pattern so you will be seeing me write on the pattern all right so let's get started okay take a look at this this is what i am going to be working with as far as the pattern is concerned you can see that i have the leg here i have the pocket over there i have the pocket and this here is the front inset pocket there is the yoke i'm going to be checking out and down here is the regular pocket from the looks at it as far as you see here this right here is the crotch. I can tell by that information and add the yoke right here. That is going to be too low for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the back out. And also I'm going to cut the front out and include the pocket as part of the front before I create a muslin since this is the first time I'm doing this. Remember, these are custom generated by your measurements and they're not completely perfect. I always like to test the pattern first and see how it's gonna fit inside of the placement line. I don't know, I need to keep cutting it out, but I just kinda wanted to check. Yeah, that's pretty neat, I like that. So that fits right in there and of course that fits and I like to check this kind of stuff too and this here fits right and you can see the placement line that goes as the curve right there and that placement line goes here that's pretty neat look at that there's the match point match point over there and this would be cut off so where you see now another thing about this yoke is i know it's going to have to be way more curved than what it is at the top i really do i know it's going to have to be much more curved at the top and there's another placement line right here and i won't be making the alterations today i'm going to keep the yoke 
and this piece here is the front side and this here is like the pocket that goes right here in this case I'm going to take this just put this together matching up the side seams and once I match up the side seams along with the notch this will be pinned together. I'm gonna cut it as one because I don't want this pocket to be separated. I wanna cut it as one and when I cut it as one, and you notice it's giving a little bit of hand insert there, okay? So in this case, I'm just gonna cut it flat, all right? It's off by probably, I say it's off by about an eighth of an inch, but that's called ease you got to be able to get your hand in there okay and that other pocket has to fit so now i'm going to cut this as one only for the fitting purposes and i am going to use i am going to go ahead and use the waist in order to do the fitting but i'm only going to cut one waist because this waist is sewn together and flipped and then top stitch to the remainder of the garment so I'm going to only cut one, okay? I'm going to measure this and make sure it fits me too first. Now let's talk about the back. As far as the back is concerned, or even the front, I'm just going to insert an invisible zipper just to give me an idea how that's going to fit. I recommend leftover pieces of maybe denim or even heavy canvas so you can get a feel for it don't use muslin in the beginning because you really can't learn anything with the little simple easy soft muslin so put that to the side and get yourself some heavier fabric but i am going to attach this yoke after i cut it out i'm not going to put this yoke on here and sew it as one whole piece because i want to kind of get an idea how much i need to take up if i do the yoke and that makes sense to me. When I'm measuring, you can put the yoke on there to see if the back is long enough. So if the back is long enough, then we'll be able to get an idea of how much crotch length we need compared to the fabric. So pin that yoke together for now, but do not cut it out as one piece. You need to find out all your base measurements before you move forward, okay? And that's what we're going to do here. So you can see where I'm actually pinning that. And you can also see this bubbling. This bubbling is essentially a dart in the back of your jean pattern. So it kind of makes the garment curve around. However, for us just to test it out, we're just going to measure it. We're just going to lay it down and pin it. Okay, so that's it. We're not going to put pockets on it. We're not going to do anything like that. This is where we're going to start doing all the measurements. The first measurement you want to take is from the upper back, center back, all the way down to the floor. Now, this means that you're going to go over your buttocks, the curve of your buttocks, all the way down to the floor. Okay? Then you're going to go on your side seam, and your side seam should match on both the patterns. Okay? Even though they are flared, they should match exactly. So you have your hip measurement here. And of course, your hip measurement for the back of your pattern is always, always going to be at an angle just for the back. But it's going to be 100% uh, perpendicular to the grain line on the front. But it's going to be at an angle to the grain line on the back. That is because the grain line and the pants on the back are always on the bias. And because that's on the bias, that actually makes it fit around your buttocks, okay? So keep that, that, make sure you align this here, which is the measurement where the um, hip line is. And while you're doing that, make sure that both pieces of the pattern the grain is straight so in order for me to make sure both piece pattern pieces front and back the grain line is straight before i align this i am going to straighten or use a ruler or anything you need to align these grain lines uh, with one another okay um let's go ahead and move this over so you can see exactly what i'm doing 
and I will take a picture so that you can see it up close. Just uh, allow me to mentally manage this before I show you a close-up picture. Okay, so this over here is not right. So, taking a look at this, this pattern does not align with the grain line. This one aligns with the grain line, the front. So I'm going to put a weight on the front so that it doesn't move while I work with it. Okay, so while I work with it, I'm going to go ahead and put a temporary and you can see that this just doesn't fit. Actually, I'm going to put this weight on top of the ruler over here so that I can concentrate on this side. There we go. All right, so now let's move this hip line to match, match up completely at this seam right here while this is being shifted and adjusted to be even with the grain line 100 percent don't don't shimmy don't give up 18th of an inch don't give up 16th of an inch 32nd of an inch don't give up anything it has to match so this one went off it doesn't match anymore right here because i got this one straight but in order to make sure it remains straight, I'm going to move it out one, one eighth of an inch. I see that, but it's still matching. Then I'm going to shift it up. You can see that this is off a little bit. That means we're going to shift this up until it matches completely. Once that matches, we're going to double check the grain line. It got off just a smidgen, just a smidgen, that's it. And this is it. So everything, is, let me see, it is a little bit over. Let's go and move this over 16th of an inch, there we go. And this is off on the leg just a tad bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this in place because this is perfect. So I'm gonna pin this side seam together right here if you were drafting this this is exactly where this line would be drawn this line would be drawn straight across and then you would open it up <laughs> they call that a full butt adjustment okay a full butt adjustment all right that's it these are even with that being done i am going to check the grain line at the bottom of the seam as well at the bottom of the leg and it is 100 percent on grain so now i'm going to measure this i can measure it without any concern that not, that it is off i'm going to i know that this is going to curve at the top to fit my curvature of my body i'm going to ignore that i'm just going to check the length from my side seam so if your curve on your side seam is very prominent, you need to determine where your waist is or where your hip is. And this hip line might not be in the correct place. If this hip line is not in the correct place, this is where you're going to lengthen it. If this hip line is not in the correct place, you can lengthen it in two places if you want, or you can make a larger, uh, let's see, you, there, let me see, you could go in two different places. You could go down at the crotch line, you can change it at the hip line, or you can change it and make a larger yoke, okay? So if you wanna make a larger yoke, that is your choice. Now, the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna measure the side seam down straight. I know my side seam is 41, I think. I'm gonna double check, you know, double check. That's 42 inches width, the curve to my knee and to the hem. Now, watch the video. The link is up here in the description. Watch the video on how to measure. I'm not going into that right now. You can watch that video. I want to show you how to measure the pattern. So now we're going to measure from that top of the side seam because I am on both side seams and I see that the knee is at the right point on both side seams, both of the seams, and they are straight. So you can measure to your knee because you're going to need to know how long or where you want the flare to happen on your body. This is a big flare. Actually, if you look at this flare and you were to look at the pants I have on right now, 
I'm not gonna go into taking pictures, but <laughs> the flare of these pants I have on is pretty doggone big. So I like that, okay? So let's keep going. All right, we're gonna go down, I said 42 inches. So I'm going from the seam line, curved around, everything like that, going down. Don't just go from here straight because you're not gonna get what you want because look at this curve. You're missing some important information. So we're gonna go down around the curve and then down to the bottom it is 39 and 3 8 i said i wanted 42 inches but i have on one and a half inch shoes a one and one fourth so if i got 39 and 3 8 i still need if i wanted to wear heels or anything like that so we write all that information on there okay one inch all right, you got to make sure you write everything correctly. <laughs> All right, two inches. So the whole three inches I need to add is added in two different places. As far as the pocket is concerned, if I am raising this two inches, I might decide to lengthen this pocket depth. Sometimes you might have to check other pants. Moving forward to how much you want on the side. Okay, we got our lines all done, but I have all of my grain lines straight. I have everything even the way I need, so I'm not going to move this at all because if I do, I'm going to end up with the grain line shifting and shifted grain lines are not fun when you're working with pants. They're not fun with anything when you're dealing with anything that has to do with a grain line. But pants is the most important. Let me put my weight back on there. Oh, don't change the weights. <laughs> Leave your weights where they need to be. Cause you'll start, you'll start getting all crooked. Double check. I am double checking. <laughs> Always double check. If you have to, there's nothing wrong with checking, checking, checking. Okay, everything is correct. So basically regarding the top, that's where all your changes are gonna happen. If I make two inches in the front, raise that, I need to determine in the back how much I'm going to raise that. I know that this crotch curve is not enough for me to get around my hip, but let's go ahead and measure that because I personally know that from the front of my crotch curve, I go down, straight down. Oh, this is looking good. I go around, it's 10 inches, but when I go straight down, it's 8 inches, but I don't want it that low. I want it to go higher. Because I want it to my waist, which is very high for a pair of pants, <laughs> don't laugh at me, okay? I'm going to go to that same place. I'm not going to add the whole 2 inches because I know I don't want it like super high, okay? So I'm going to gradually bring it down with this 2 inches here. I'm going to bring it down about one and a half, one or maybe one inch and take it to nine inches and then it'll go there. So that's a choice you have to make. Okay. So this front, I'm only going to raise up by one and a half inch. And I have a feeling I'm going to have to lower it some anyway, because I know how my jeans fit. Now for the back, we have if you know your crotch length, which you will know how to take your crotch length in the video I have attached, but I am going to double check. Don't put any seam. You can add a half an inch to the crotch depth for comfort and sitting because these fit very close. If you're using super stretchy fabric, do not add anything, okay? All right, I have 29 inches, 28 and a half inches that I'm dealing with. I'm starting here at one and a half inches, going down the front, going to the edge, that's 11 inches. So that means I am going to need 27 inches in the back, all right? And I see right now, this is not enough. So I need to go up. I'm raising everything two inches as it is. In order to balance this out, I'm going to add one inch to the size of the yoke. Yeah, I think that's good enough. That You make the choice how big you want your yoke, okay? If these are really high-weighted pants, you might want to only have, like this yoke is two and a half inches. You might want a three-inch yoke, okay? So do half an inch. I want, uh, let's see if I can get away with a three and a half inch. I think I want a three and a half inch waist yoke. So I'm going to raise my yoke one inch. So if I'm raising my 
back two inches. Then I'm going to raise my yoke by one and I'm going to raise the body of the pants by one. That's two inches that I'm raising the yoke, the whole back of the pants for the crotch length. So I'm going to measure from two inches down, which is going to give me a very long crotch length, which I know is 29 inches normally. So I'm going to keep on measuring this all the way around, which is going to give me the extra that I need, which means that I need to extend this crotch length exactly one and a half inches to two inches to fit all the way under my body, my buttocks so that I won't have flattening me in the back. This curve here is part of creating more room for the fullest area of your backside. So because of that, I'm gonna measure from there. Oh, let me do plus one inch here on the yoke and then here on the backside plus one inch. We can do it at the exact line where we cut for the hip line. That would be better if you make that adjustment, you won't make a mistake throwing off the grain line. I would recommend you do that. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna add for the crotch line one and one half inch to push that out to give me more underneath my buttocks. At the hip line across the back side of my body, I'm gonna measure, cause I said my hip line is at least, if my hip line is nine and a fourth. That means if I add two inches to the back, then the two inches is a three-fourths of an inch. That means my hip line needs to be lowered by three-fourths of an inch here, right there, when I get to, when I open it up and measure and do all that good stuff. So it's gonna be one inch. All right, so, or three-fourths. So I'm gonna measure from this point here, and I'm gonna measure to the side seam. That is 12 inches. That's 24 inches across the back. 24 inches across the back of my buttocks is not enough. I got 24 and a half inches, then the pattern is off by half of an inch. It was 12 inches, so now I need to ha add half of an inch. Where am I gonna add that half of an inch? In this case, I want to ha add that half of an inch to two seams, because you have two back seams on the side seams. I'm gonna add it to the side seams at the hip. So that means I'm gonna add a half an inch and because there's two side seams, I'm gonna add it and it's gonna add up to be, oh, I said a half an inch, I'm sorry. I'm gonna add one fourth of an inch to both sides of that back pattern piece. I am not gonna add anything to the front just yet until I measure my front and then when I'm done, it should add up to the full body measurement of my hip. And that is 44 inches. So I'm gonna take that 44 inches and divide it by two, and this whole measurement should equal, and it's off over here by one half of an inch, one fourth of an inch, which means that this one fourth of an inch is gonna give me what I need. Now, if I do just across the front at my hip line, just across the front, it gives me 20 inches, which is 10 inches right here at the hip line, and I measure 10 inches at the hip line, it is giving me the same as I told you, that one fourth of an inch. So I'm adding one fourth of an inch to the side seam over here. With that, you can take a half inch off the side seam, but I don't wanna take a half inch off the side seam because that's not where I know personally I need to take it off. I'm gonna take that half inch, which is one fourth of an inch, I'm gonna take that one fourth of an inch off the front, because I know how my body is made. Now, if you know that you usually have problems with the fabric bundling up on your body in the front, then you can take, you can add it to the side seam or you can take it off. You know, you could choose to, for the back, add it to the back. These would be very tight pants, zero ease. If I'm making a non-stretch pant, I will add one half an inch on both sides of these pants. I mean, both sides of the side seam of the back and on the front, I will not take away that half an inch because I will not be able to sit down. <laughs> so don't make that mistake. The next thing you need to do is determine 
for your calf, or I mean your thigh in the front and your thigh underneath your buttock. Now the thigh underneath your buttock is going to be determined based on how much of a curve you have. Mine is usually uh, only, it kind of just dips under. So mine usually is going to be two and a half to three inches underneath my buttock or my crotch. So I'm going to go underneath by that amount. Once I go underneath by that amount, I'm going to draw a line and then I'm going to measure the back side of my thigh or measure your whole thigh. And once you measure your entire thigh, right under your crotch, right at your crotch level, and then below it if you want to, I got 26 and a half inches for my thigh. Okay? So I don't know how much of that is the back part of my thigh. So I'm going to measure that one, which tells me it's not big enough. That one is like kind of baggy. At this point, it's not big enough. Go over to the front, and I can see why my pants seems always pitched to the back because this shows that I do not have enough room for the front. That means I am gonna have to straighten out this side seam from the front and the back or I'm gonna to have to give myself more across my thigh. You could give yourself more across the thigh by just opening up the full length of the pant. Just opening it up, the full length of the pant just to give your thigh some more room. I need an inch and a half, which means for two pair, one, this is one pair, one leg. So that whole one and a half inch has to go into here. It could be split between the side seam and the inseam. That's your choice. On the other one, you can split it between the side seam and the inseam on the back. That's your choice. But I recommend that you do it on both. If you need to take some out of the inseam, take the same amount out of the side seam. If you need to do the same thing to the front, your main objective is that these seams match perfectly in order to keep this pattern balanced. If you do not keep this pattern balanced, it will twist around your leg and then you'll be mad at me. <laughs> Don't be mad at me, okay? Do like I say or else you're not gonna have what I have. When I'm done, I'm gonna have a really nice pair of pants. So this is where the biggest issue is for fitting a pair of jeans. If you use stretched fabric, make sure this pattern is exactly the measurement of your body. If you use any fabric that has no stretch whatsoever. You need to add accommodating ease for you to be able to sit down, which means that I would expect you to take your measurement while you're sitting down. If you take your measurement while you're sitting down, when you wrap that tape measure around your hips at the fullest part, have a seat. When you have a seat, it's going to give you the tape measure is going to shift and it's going to give you all the excess room you need for this to be able to fit. Otherwise, you're just going to be having to add more to the side seam. Better to have it than to have to, than to wish you had it. Okay, we're back. So hopefully that information was helpful for you to get started. And I did make a muslin of a pattern for, I, I made my pattern for the jeans that, that I uh, made here now like i said before i utilized a very strong um bottom weight fabric you can use a bottom weight you can use a uh, a twill or anything like that uh in the meantime before we move on with getting anything else together while you're trying to work on the pattern i would recommend you go ahead and wash whatever fabric you choose to use in coca-cola red can no diet one can in the washing machine wash your fabric two to three times maybe four times if you need to to get it as soft as you want if you want to make it before you wash it then that is a different type of jean and it is something that can be done it's kind of like we used to buy the levi pants levi jeans that never were washed you would have to give yourself some extra room extra length and everything 
and then you wash the pans, wear them for a long time without washing them or something like that. I know there's a way to do it. And then the jeans will form to your body. I love it when that happens. This Jeans always go back to a stretchy size when you wear them a lot and then washing them, they come back every time you dry them. So that's your choice. That's not something I want to get into because my focus is on fitting the pattern. And for those of you in my uh, sewing group, which is my patron club, you're going to be, uh, if you're interested, it's here. You're going to be getting the download for analyzing the size pattern before utilizing your measurements, analyzing the measurements, and then moving from there to choosing the pattern size. So I appreciate you guys for jumping in. I appreciate you guys for following So to Fit on YouTube, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good evening. Bye.